Good afternoon, everyone. It's great uh, to be here. I'm, uh, I'm James Carpenter, and our uh, mission at Shore Pulse is to improve the life chances for premature and sick babies. And that's because one in 10 babies need some form of stabilization or resuscitation immediately after delivery. Uh, so this might be because they're born premature or have congenital defects or had some trauma uh, during the actual delivery process, uh, such as the umbilical cord being uh, wrapped around um, the baby's neck. Um, that adds up to around 77,000 uh, in the UK, 380,000 in the USA. Uh, now, out of that, there'll be a range of outcomes, uh, but at the more severe end, those uh, babies that are starved of oxygen during the resuscitation uh, process or delivery process, uh, which adds up to around 10,000 a year in the USA, 1,700 a year in the UK, um, uh, and within that group, there's a number of what, what have been identified as avoidable deaths. Uh, these are ones where mismanagement of the resuscitation um, could have actually prevented uh, the death from taking place. So when a baby is, is born, um, on the left is an extract of the neonatal resuscitation guidelines. Uh, and these are really the first few steps that are designed to take place within the first 60 seconds. So uh, obviously once the baby's born, uh, the aim is to delay uh, the clamping of the cord because that allows vi vital uh, blood flow and oxygen to get to the baby, uh, to dry and wrap, to stimulate the baby, to keep them warm. Uh, and then immediately to make an assessment of the tone um, and the breathing and the heart rate. Now it's been shown through studies, uh, a meta-analysis of, of adherence to this program, that up to 55% of resuscitations, and that's in the USA, uh, do not adhere to the basic steps of the neonatal resuscitation program. Uh, this is for a variety of reasons, but one of the main ones is around the actual monitoring technology that, that is available um, to clinicians and healthcare providers at birth. Uh, so pulse oximeters, uh, which are ubiquitous in hospitals now, uh, can be very slow to pick up um, a reading. I've got some data coming up showing that uh, one pulse oximeter took six minutes to pick up a heart rate after birth. ECG electrodes uh, don't stick very well to freshly born uh, skin. Uh, they fall off and cause skin stripping. And so clinicians uh, fall back on the stethoscope, and that's been shown to have one in three assessment errors. And so when things go wrong for these, uh, for these babies, they can go badly wrong, um, uh, resulting in um, uh, uh, brain damage uh, and more adverse uh, morbidities um, uh, and mortality. So um, our vision at Shore Pulse is to give clinicians and healthcare providers the tools they need to provide optimal newborn care. And our product strategy um, uh, ranges from uh, giving the basics of, um, of vital sign monitoring, the heart rate, which is essential for, for neonatal resuscitation in our VS cap, through a multi-parameter system for extremely premature babies, uh, and to build on that platform of, of sensing and data gathering with a data and analytics platform that provides intelligent analysis of the resuscitation data uh, and information for skills uh, improvement and personalized training. We now have a suite of six patents um, underlying the technology and form factor of the product, of which four are granted, and our freedom to operate search uh, has not identified any conflicts uh, with our competitors. So the VS cap uh, is a wireless heart rate monitor that's uh, specifically designed for you straight after birth. So lots of existing monitors um, are uh, kind of really adult devices that are repurposed for neonatal care. This is an optical sensor integrated into a bonnet. It's put on, uh, a bonnet's put on every baby to keep their head warm. That communicates wirelessly with the display which is mounted on the resuscitation table. Uh, this now has CE approval and FDA clearance. Now here's just an example of some of the data that the device gives in comparison to a pulse oximeter. So on the, uh, the, the time trace on the left starts at birth. You see the pulse oximeter in orange takes six and a half minutes to pick up a pulse rate. Uh, and at that time, the pulse rate is actually incorrect and it's halved the actual rate. Whereas the shore pulse picks up within 35 seconds. Now when every second counts, this is absolutely it's absolutely critical to give clinicians what they need to, um, uh, to be able to manage the resuscitation appropriately, and current technologies just don't do uh, what they need to. Whereas Shore Pulse, because of the location of the sensor and the optimization for birth, we can pick up the heart rate when it's needed. We're really excited about uh, the, uh, the next phase of our, of our product, which is a multi-parameter patch. Again, this is specifically designed for you straight after birth. So it consists of a multi-parameter sensor, that it actually attaches to the wet newborn skin using a polyethylene wrap uh, that sticks using surface tension and the properties of the vernix um, uh, and, uh, and other liquids on the skin. It measures oxygen saturation, pulse rate, ECG, and temperature. It uses video recording uh, for the purposes of audit and training 
and also interfaces with, with respiratory function monitors. So this is a complete resuscitation package for extremely premature um, infants. Um, and again, it's designed to give clinicians everything they need to manage these babies um, uh, uh, yeah, um, uh, in the best way possible. So with our VSCAP, we now have five pilots across the UK um, uh, and one in the USA. We're now uh, seeking to sign a US distribution partnership with our patch product. We're at clinical trial prototype stage, starting clinical trials within a month or so, um, and uh, aiming for FDA submission uh, in the middle of next year. We're targeting uh, a large and growing market. Rates of prematurity are increasing. It's about $7.7 .7 billion uh, is spent on neonatal care across the, uh, the UK, EU, and USA. Around 25% of that is spent on monitoring. Uh, but just working from the bottom up, uh, we operate a razor razor blade model with the caps and patches being single patient use, and these are priced from $40 to $100. Uh, the actual capital um, displays are priced from $5,000 to $15,000 for the multi-parameter system. Um, and with a license fee for the, um, for the audit and training package, it's around a target market of around uh, $800 million per year, uh, with a beachhead of $46 million per year, which represent the highest risk births. In terms of competition, there are a number of players uh, now looking at operating in the neonatal field. Um, Lurdle is the only one that's actually looking at the problem of resuscitation, and their offering only does uh, ECG heart rate. Um, other players, such as Siebel and Vitals, are looking at the intensive care environment, um, but their offerings, firstly, um, aren't indicated for use in the neonatal, um, uh, the neonatal period, and also don't have the complete range of, of vital sign parameters. Uh, so we're the only company looking at giving clinicians everything that they need in a specific package that will work for babies you know, in those um, crucial moments after birth. Um, so uh, uh, I founded the company along with um, Don Sharkey, our clinical director, and Barry Hayes-Gill, our research director. Barry previously founded Monica Healthcare, which is a fetal monitoring company that was sold to GE a few years ago. Uh, I've now raised six and a half million pounds of investment and grants to su support Shorepulse uh, to where we are today. We've recently brought on uh, Bill Allen as our, as our chairman. <clears throat> We've also amassed a clinical advisory board here in the UK. We're looking at adding to that um, in the USA, but it's a multidisciplinary board, including obstetrics, um, neonatology, and midwifery, because it's so important to have the voice of everyone on the team um, uh, uh, in the resuscitation, um, where all the roles obviously really, really matter. We've just been awarded, uh, on top of the two million pounds of grants we've been awarded already, we've just been awarded another two million pounds of grants uh, to fund development of the, uh, the patch and regulatory clearances. Um, uh, and that builds on uh, cornerstone investors via the University of Nottingham and Sympatica. We're now raising two million pounds uh, to expand the uh, commercial rollout of the VS cap in the USA with our distribution partner and to support match funding uh, with our trials. And that is designed to take us through regulatory um, uh, approvals uh, for the patch and into the commercial phase. The neonatal indication is a highly underserved market. Pediatrics is ripe for investment. So there's a significant unmet need. We have got a track record. We've been operating for seven years. We've got regulatory clearances, and we've got substantial non-dilutive uh, funding uh, to match this investment. We've already got a uh, proven track record within the team, um, taking devices, monitoring devices through uh, to, for acquisition by Med MedTech Strategics, uh, and that is our planned course uh, for Shorepulse. So uh, I'm James Carpenter. Thank you very, very much for listening, um, and have a great afternoon. <laughs>